What's going on everybody? Today is Friday, which means it's Razor Chroma Profile Day. And today we have a viewer request design for you guys. I got a request from the user Wreckage on my Discord channel to do a Punisher theme design. So that's what we're going to be doing today. This design primarily displays a skull on your keyboard, kind of replicating the logo of Punisher. And it also has a fire effect that's kind of in the background of it as well. Another unique feature about this design is the ripple effect that I did for it. It kind of creates a bullet shot type of effect. So it kind of looks like you're shooting bullets on the keyboard as you press some keys. So I'm gonna be showing you guys exactly how I did this design. In the description below will be a download link so you guys can go and download this design on your Razer Chroma keyboards. But if you guys wanna learn how I did it step by step, here's the tutorial to show you guys just that. All right, to begin creating this Punisher design, we're gonna start with a brand new profile. So within your Studio tab in Synapse, click these three dots at the top and you wanna click Add. And that's gonna give you a brand new profile to start out with. And the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to double click on any of the affected keys. So any key that has a green outline. And we're going to change the Spectrum Cycling layer to a regular static layer, okay? And with all of your lighting zones selected, we're gonna change this to a yellow color. So in your hex code, we're just gonna change it to FFFF00, okay? That's gonna give you a, a yellow static color all over everything. And what this yellow color is, is it's actually the color of our fire. Now we are going to be using a fire effect, but we're going to be using a transparent node in that fire effect so that we can change the background color if we want to. Let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. So we're gonna leave this static layer alone with yellow here, and I'm gonna add the fire effect to our design here. So with this fire effect selected, I'm gonna click on my quick selections here and I'm gonna have it choose everything, so every lighting zone that we have. So with everything selected, I'm going to change my cold to red, which is going to give us our fire effect, and the hot, I'm just gonna leave it transparent, okay? Now, our keyboard looks a little bit messed up. It doesn't really show much of a fire effect because it's sharing the effect with all of my devices that I have. So it's spreading out that fire effect on this whole entire canvas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to click into this gray area here and I'm gonna select just my keyboard. I'm gonna click on my red color and I'm gonna change the very last digit from a six to a seven. This is not even a noticeable difference as far as the eye can see, but it does make it different from your other devices. So now because my keyboard is a different effect than what's on my other devices. It's only spreading that effect across this smaller canvas. So you can actually see the fire effect a lot better. And from here, um, the reason I did our transparent node as our hot part is because we can actually, if we want to, we can go ahead and add a spectrum cycling layer, drag the spectrum cycling layer below the fire Okay, so above our static so that it overrides the yellow color. So if we wanted to with this spectrum cycling color, we could scroll out and we could do our quick selection and select all of our lighting zones, click our color drop down, and we can choose this multicolor pattern and hit save. And this will actually create random colors for a fire effect. So if you wanted to do something like that with your design, you 100% could do that. And it would just slowly change colors for you. So that's the reason I wanted to go with the transparent node on the fire so that we can have a random color change if we want that, okay? So moving on from here, the next layer that we're going to be adding is our audio meter. We're gonna go straight into the audio meter from here. 
So we're going to click the audio meter layer. And what we're going to do with this audio meter layer is when audio is being played, we're just going to have the fire start bouncing up and down according to how loud your audio is. So we're going to select all of our lighting zones on our keyboard here. And you'll have to mess around with the properties to see what values work best for your audio on your PC because each PC is different. But mine works best at about 1.5 or 1.75. Okay, so I'm gonna choose these properties right here. I'm gonna click on my color drop down, and I'm going to click on my. I'm gonna click on this two node pattern right here. Okay, and with this two node pattern, um, the first node here, we're actually going to leave black. Okay, so it's gonna be black. And the second note over here, we're gonna make transparent, okay? So the keyboard will be completely black when audio starts to be played until the audio gets to a level that's high enough and then it'll start showing the fire effect underneath it, okay? So we're gonna hold control and I'm gonna deselect this bottom row. I click on my color gradient and I'm gonna move it up the list a little bit higher, okay? So these keys that I have selected will reveal the fire when audio is a little bit higher than that bottom row. And we're just going to do this in steps all the way up each horizontal line and increase the audio value each time we go. So we're going to hold control and we're going to select the next row up or deselect. We're going to click on our color drop down and we're going to drag the color nodes over a little bit more like that good and we're going to hold control deselect the next row up click our color drop down drag our nodes over control deselect the next row up click our color drop down and drag them over control deselect the next row up and last adjustment here just gonna drag those over just like that okay so that's all we're gonna do for our audio meter now I'm gonna play a little bit of music so you guys can see what that audio meter looks like so as you can see the fire is bouncing a little bit on the keyboard right Okay, for the next part of this design, we are going to be adding a wave layer. And this wave layer is actually going to be the Punisher logo part of the design, okay? So we can actually double click on this wave effect layer and we can name this to Punisher logo, okay? All right, so with this Punisher logo layer selected, we're going to hold control and we're just gonna start selecting out the shape of our skull, okay? So the, the Punisher skull. So I'm going to select all of these keys right here. It's like this. Um, and then I'm just gonna select a couple down here like this. So this is going to be my skull. I'm actually gonna hold control here and deselect the three and the four lighting zone. And then over here, I'm gonna deselect the nine and the zero lighting zone. Okay. And with our color drop down here, we're going to click on that and we're going to choose this three node pattern right here. We're going to make the inside node here white. The outside node, we're going to make white as well, but we're going to drag this down a little bit darker. Okay. So like right here. So we got 707070 for our hex code. We can copy that or just remember the code. Click on your third hex node here, or your third node rather. Double click and paste in your hex code or just type in 707070, okay? So we're gonna click off of this little color window that we have pulled up here. And we're gonna choose the split option here, okay? So you can see the white effect on our design is kind of spreading out from the middle of the skull to the outsides, all right? So that looks good there. I'm actually going to 
select one of these effects, select one of these lighting zones that we have the effect on and hold control and press C to copy it. And I'm gonna select all of the keys that kind of border this skull. So I'm gonna select the eyes and I'm gonna select every key or every lighting zone that's on the outside of our skull here. So I'll select all of these ones right here and I'm gonna hold control and press V to paste in that white effect that we have there. And with these keys still selected, I'm gonna click on our color gradient. I'm gonna choose this two, oh, that's three nodes. I'm gonna choose this two node pattern right here, the, the red and yellow, okay? The first node, we're gonna make all zeros, okay? And the second node, we're also going to make all zeros. So this just gives us a white, uh, a regular black outline for our skull and kind of makes it stand out on the keyboard a little bit better. Okay, we'll hit save. So now what you get once this renders in here is you get a black or white skull with a black outline on top of some fire effect, okay? The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to make our unique ripple effect that kind of looks like a gunshot. Okay, so we're gonna add a ripple layer. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create the bullet shot, okay? So it's gonna look like a bullet shot. So we're gonna select all of our lighting zones on our keyboard, and we're gonna click our color drop down here, and we're gonna choose the single node color pattern here. So it's just one node there, all right? This one node we're gonna make white. We're gonna select off of that, we're gonna make our speed on this ripple 50, so maximum speed. That way um, it goes fast and looks more bullet-like, okay? Our width, we're gonna bring down to 200%, and we're gonna have the playback set to start on selected keys, okay? Because we only want this to go off when the selected key, when these selected keys are pressed, all right? And we want it to go in a line so we need each horizontal line to be unique from one another. That way they only travel in a line. So let me just go ahead and show you first. We're gonna hold control. And we're gonna deselect this bottom row here of keys. We're gonna click on our color gradient and we're going to change our very last node from an F to an E, okay? We're gonna Hold control once again, deselect our next row up. Click our color gradient. We're gonna change our fourth digit from an F to an E. So you got F, 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 E, F, E, okay? I'm gonna hold control, deselect our next row up. Click our color gradient. We're gonna change our color hex from that one to an F E F E F E. Okay, hold control, deselect the next row up, click our color gradient, and sometimes your code won't show up here. Um, what I do is I will just select off of here, double click on here, and just redo it again. And a lot of times that will give us our hex code. If not, you may have to click on the node up here just kind of click around. Synapse is a little bit buggy. Sometimes clicking the node will make them show up. Sometimes selecting one of these boxes will make them show up. You just kind of got to mess around with it a little bit. Hopefully that gets fixed one day. But anyways, so we got to make these two horizontal lines different from the others. So we're going to start changing the E's back. So we're going to make that last E and F. So you got F, E, F, E, F, F. We're gonna hold control, deselect the next row up, click our color gradient, and we're gonna change this middle E to an F, okay? So now each horizontal line will be unique in their hex value. So if I double click, you can see that effect is only on that line. That effect is only on that line. That line, that line, that line, and that line. Each horizontal line is unique, okay? So now when we go to press a key on our keyboard, 
it will ripple just on that line, okay? So you only see it ripple on the line that's being pressed, all right? So that's it for the bullet animation. Now we're going to make the fire or explosion from the gun animation also with another ripple. So we're gonna add a second ripple layer, okay? And we're gonna select all of our keys here and we don't have to make each horizontal line unique on this one, okay? Because it's gonna be more of a, an explosion that doesn't travel very far, okay? So we're gonna click on our color gradient. We're gonna change it to a two node pattern here. And we're gonna drag this right node all the way up against the red, okay? We're gonna make this node right here transparent. Then I'm gonna drag it a little bit. We're gonna do some fine very delicate work here, and we're just gonna drag this node a little bit away from that red one, just like that. Just a little gap in there. Drag this red node up against that yellow, or the transparent, and we're gonna make this red node orange. That's it, okay? We'll click off of that. We're gonna have this um, do on press, so on selected keys, or change it from start on press to start on selected keys and we're going to up our speed to 50 to match the bullet okay and we'll hit save so now when you go and press any key on your keyboard you should see a small orange explosion also with a, the bullet travel so you press the key on your keyboard there's a little bit of explosion that happens on your keyboard as well as bullet travel. You guys can't really see it in Synapse, but it reflects on your keyboard very well. That is all it takes to create this design. Here's the showcase to show you guys what it looks like on my desktop. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'd like to know if you guys are actually going to use this on your keyboards, so let me know in the comment section below. If not, also let me know what design you guys are rolling with right now. I'd like to know what you guys are using on your keyboard. As always, if you guys have any ideas for any Razer Chrome profiles that you guys would like to see, then go ahead and leave that in the comment section as well. That's gonna do it for this video. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys next week.